Ah. Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 18 of Terra Firma Punk. We're here on Grimcore's TF Punk server, and we're in a terrible place. We're down in uh, the dungeon that Grim and I have been slowly working our way through and clearing, and this is what we're looking for. I came and hunted this down and bookmarked it earlier. Um, this is a spider spawner. Oops, this place. I'm just trying to make sure we don't get overrun while I'm, while we're working on this. Um, so let me make sure I remember the way back here. I said last episode, yeah, that's the way. I said last episode that we were going to work on this. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I've got all the supplies I need on me. I've been in creative trying to come up with, uh, let's actually use these. It'll be much easier to break through again if we need to. Um, I've been working on a design in creative and spiders. Oh man, they're like my most hated mob to work with, but we need string and I promised I'd make one of these at some point. So that's what we're going to do. Um, the problem with, sorry if I'm a little bit stiffly, by the way, my hay fever is still going absolutely crazy. It's driving me nuts. The problem with um, spiders Right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, the problem with spiders is that they don't really behave like other mobs. The fact that they climb, they can climb walls, makes it really hard to funnel them around. They fight the current really well. Um, we've got other challenges in this place as well, which is mostly centered around the fact that it's a giant stinking death trap. Um, so, like, the, the most effective way I know of for... Uh, we're going to lose all this stuff, but it's fine. I don't care. Uh, I could probably put a chest down somewhere, couldn't I? Hickory vertical planks? Oh, I just mined those, didn't I? Okay. Um, if we try to, for example, like, just dig a giant pit down. I want that chest. Did I get the chest? I'm not seeing a chest. I'm going to put this other chest I brought with me down just for a second so we can pull our stuff down. Um... If we dig down too far to create a pit for them to fall and just die, because that's the easiest way. Make a massive hole around it, you know, that 4x4x4 four by four by four space around the spawner. Um, 16 blocks down should be enough to kill them straight away. And I find if they just spawn and drop, they don't have time to sort of move to a wall and start climbing up it. So usually that just kills them instantly. Um, the problem with that is, one, as we dig down, we're going to be cutting through more and more layers of this dungeon. And getting progressively worse and worse mobs chasing after us. Uh, and also the fact that to collect the loot with a system like that, you have to basically line the bottom with hoppers, which is fine in vanilla, but no bueno in TFC, where everything costs the entire world to make. So, I've come up with a functional, if imperfect, kind of design. Um, so I'll show you guys that. Just remember that it's not... Um, we're, we're doing mob farms in TFC, not vanilla, so you've got to make kind of allowances for, uh, <laughs> for style, or, or lack thereof, shall we say. You'll, you'll see what I mean when we get there, but I'm just going to clear this out, normal size and dimensions. I will do a, like, tutorial video for this as well, um, just so you can sort of see exactly what I'm, what I'm doing, all the dimensions, if you want to, like, build your own. I'll, in fact, there should be a link in the top right of the screen right now. I'll put it put it up now so you can click on it if you want to. Um, and that'll show you kind of step by step. But it's, it's a general kind of four in every direction, so I need to basically expand this room out. And when I've done that, I'll, I'll show you the next sort of step as well. I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, I think we're just about good to go here. Um, let me start filling this in. I'll kind of explain um, what's going on. In fact, let me put a torch down temporarily because you're not going to be able to see a thing because it's super dark down here. But in fact, let's put it here and I'll do that part last. Um, these spiders that we're trying to farm are absolutely tiny. Like, I think there's something like a quarter of a block cubed, if you know what I mean. Uh, I guess that makes it like an eighth of a block square, cubed rather, whatever. Math is not my strong point, you guys know that. Um, so obviously the smallest we're gonna be able to work with here and have water flowing through is one block by one block. 
Um, because spiders, and these guys are no exception, will fight the current, if they get a chance, they'll jump up um, on walls and stick to walls. They like to stick near the ceilings, and so it's hard to drag them down into the water currents. Um, you want to do everything you can to drag them down into the water and drag them through where you want to go, and that means giving them as little... A little as little space to move around as humanly possible so put those down like this now we've got this one high thing for them to move through uh, hopefully you can see that let's just put another torch down just in case like a one high space for them to move through there's a hopper at the end and the way that these water streams are gonna work is I'm gonna put one in each corner here and it should all of the flows should push them the spiders towards the middle from the out, it's like scooping them in from the outsides of the room, pushing them towards the middle, pushing them in, pushing them in, even in these corners here, and eventually push them through underneath here and towards that hopper. This specter glass here is because they tend to get a little bit stuck around here where they fight and try to climb up the walls, um, and having that little bit of extra space where they can move through it, but they see it as a solid block. They don't seem to try climbing it quite so much um, and so it just helps them get pushed and pushed through and the way this this design works and the reason it's kind of a compromise is because you can't get them all it's not perfect at dragging them down and into that sort of collection area thing was there a gap here that collection at the end the way it's actually designed is to drown them on their way <laughs> to that collection area and with all the flows moving inwards it pushes all of the drops as they drown um, towards that hopper so it should get all of the loot um, and the reason it goes so far backwards instead of me just trying to drown them like over here is because I want to do it further from this spawner to increase the spawn rates if there's too many uh, mobs within range of this thing it'll stop spawning more and we don't want that. We want to get as many of them out at a time as possible. And it's not 100%. I'd have to go a lot further back in order to get all the, the spiders far enough away from from the spawner. Um, but the other problem is that we're getting very close to the next layer of the dungeon and we don't want to be dealing with that, right? Let me just double check this for my sanity. It's easier to check it now than after we've closed everything in. Yeah, see underneath here now is a one high gap, so hopefully the water's gonna push them underneath here. We're also gonna be exploiting their AI because they will track you um, within uh, some silly number of blocks and they'll start moving towards you. So the idea is we're gonna get as low as possible and all the way over there, and with a combination of the water currents and their AI, use both of those things to pull them underneath this um, ledge here and again back towards where that hopper is on the far side. Now I'm going to remove these. Might even start spawning while I'm doing this because they can spawn in the corners. Yeah, there we go. It's a common misconception that lighting up the spawner is all you need to do to stop them spawning. That's not how it works. It checks this 4 by f uh, well 9 by 9 area centered on the the spawner, I guess. Um, and if any of those air spaces are dark enough for the mob to spawn, that's little, what'll happen. So in this case, we're getting mobs spawning in the corners because we're close enough to make the spawner active. There goes another one. Thankfully, they're quite easy to kill. Um, yeah, so let's get rid of these. We're actually going to need a block on top of the spawner, but obviously not a pumpkin because that's going to be uh, lighting the area up. But I want to get this water down first. Now, it is possible to make this a bucketless design. And I'll talk about that in the tutorial video. I'm not gonna do that because of where this spawner is. Uh, you have to get a little bit lucky with, with the placement of it. Um, plus I've already got this liquid drainer so I don't need it. So I'm gonna put one in that corner, one in that corner. All flows in, so wherever we go in this room, if I hold this torch, will it help? Even if we're in the corners here, we should start getting pushed towards the middle. But you can see they're, they're fighting the current. It's not enough to just have the water. You have to be in the right direction as well or this thing doesn't work. But let's break this and then try to get out of here. Oh, come on. Put you there because we don't want them spawning on top and getting stuck. Ow. You jerks. 
Oh, there's so many already. Oh, we're getting hats. That's good. There you go. He goes underneath. Um, I'm just going to sacrifice a couple of these things. Oh, is that? Yeah, that'll get me out. Sorry, this is dark. Let's put a torch down. Break you. Get out of here. Break you. And then we should be able to just wall this off and be safe. We don't want any light getting in there. I'll tidy all this up later, but I've kind of pre-dug this collection area down here. Ah, oh, and here we go. Let's put some torches down for now just so you guys can see. I'm usually going to leave it dark just so no light bleeds through this stair and into the, the spawning area. Got our stuff back here. Get rid of the spider eyes because you don't normally get those. And you can probably hear them drowning and see all the red dots on the map there. They're either drowning on top of this hopper or on their way as they get all bunched up because they're so small, even having like a thin stream of water um, is deep enough to, to drown them. So we're already getting quite a bit of string. Again, it's not as super efficient as some designs could be, but I think I think we're doing pretty well for, for Terra Firma Craft. Um, <laughs> like I say, I'll make a tutorial video to make it a little bit easier to see the dimensions and stuff, and I can I'll do it without the shaders. You can you can see even it won't be as as dark. But yeah, pretty happy with that. And what I'm gonna do, the reason I made this little room is I'm just gonna put a little chair in here, maybe a loom or two, because then you can just be grabbing your string and weaving it while you're a while you're sort of semi AFK and waiting for the string to to catch up. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to take a cut there. I'm going to wait and farm up some string, and then I'll see you guys back at the base. Okay, guys. Yep, yeah, so we're back on the base, and, um, well, I need to get some progress made, right? You'll have to forgive me if I'm a little bit tired. I've been up all night watching the... We have the, the referendum today, and we're not going to talk about the results. Let's just pretend it never happened. Um, but so I want to make this sieve. I uh, need to make this with birch wood, so we should have the stuff we need for that now. I just need to remember where I put my string. That's great. So let's make a couple of these meshes. One and two of you. And we got plenty of extra now. I upgraded the um, the ex the spider farm with like a stool and some some looms and stuff, so we can we can be weaving as we go. But this is, should be all we need, I think. A couple of these and these. Boom, we got a sieve. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's going to be boring, but I can use this um, to get some of the resources we need to progress now. Uh, I like to make the boilers and stuff, so that's a, a big thing. We needed that. As for the rest, I need to decide what to do with this. So this is going to be like a machine room. Um, I need to come up with a sort of a layout for this. It's not going to be like a big arched room. It's almost like a little covered basement that the the building's going to be built on top of, but on top of that, I want to do like a layer just for, I don't even know if it's going to be permanent, but just some some storage, an area for some chests, because I'm sick of having everything scattered over there, over there. Uh, Grim and I have been talking about moving things around, because this is all temporary, apparently, um, and I'm sick of having junk spread everywhere in chests everywhere with no storage system, so I kind of want to get the framework set up for that. And if I can get the area built, I can get organized, and next episode I'll start working on the steam power, so that'll be fun. Oh yeah, I threw this, this coke oven in here as well. Uh, oh, we've got 40 coal coke already. Let's see if we have any more coal. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need another chest, aren't I? I have to keep stacking everything up in here. Be like another coal there. Another seven coal. Shove that in, it'll keep producing. I just want to get a little bit stocked up for when we build the boilers. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm just going to work on this, see if we can get some progress, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, don't get mad, guys. I think I might have got a little bit carried away. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't really get any sleep last night, so I've just been messing around. Um, stuff that doesn't require too much thinking, just playing around with blocks. Pretty pretty easy on the brain, so I've just been enjoying that, chilling out today and getting some building done, so we can get some progress. We've got, um, you can come straight out of the blacksmith now to the top of this structure. There's just like this platform here for now, I haven't really done anything with it, but it connects over to that building that we made. 
Um, and then there's like a set of stairs that go down. And then this is our storage area now. And I have actually gone and gathered all of the items from the like the hunting lodge and the, the luxury cave. And all of our like random chests that were here and in the blacksmith. I've gathered everything together into these chests, more or less. And everything that isn't there, we've got down underneath in this bit right here. Um, just mostly bulk items like all this stone. I've got all these like random flax beards, bits and pieces. Uh, we've got our sieve under here. This framed furniture paneler, which I use to color the the stool that's in the string farm. Although I don't think I've shown that on camera yet, but I will. I will um, when we get a chance. Um, yeah, I've I've added this kind of hickory wood to the side of these because I think it looked a little bit silly just as brass on its own. I kind of like the way that edges it, but uh, let me know what you guys think. Put a little bit of detailing here to block in this coke oven thing. Filled out this wall. So hopefully you can sort of see like this. Oh, that looks a bit weird there. Well, I can sort that out later. That doesn't matter. Um, you can hopefully sort of see where like the gate's going to be in this entrance here. And there's going to be the same on the other side. I also... While I was moving all the items around, found our vanilla acacia sapling, which I totally forgot about. So we've planted that in the middle here. It's like a centerpiece. It's got they've got these cool uh, round logs, which I kind of like. And that reminded me that there's actually a second type of string farm we can make in uh, Terra Firma Punk. So I thought maybe I'd show you that as well. So it's two string farms in one episode, and there you go. <laughs> Any, anyone who's used X Nilo before will know about these or you played sky blocks I've seen a lot of people complaining in the forums though that they can't figure out how to get the silkworms to work and they won't work with TFC trees or forestry trees apparently but they do work with these vanilla ones if you find one of these vanilla saplings in a dungeon and I'll show you where to find those in another video it means I gotta make two tutorial videos now <laughs> but I'll put a link at the top right of the screen there um, show you to where to find the things then you just make a crook like so with sticks, and this is good for getting extra saplings anyway. And you can actually get the silkworms from TFC trees, so just go break in some leaves until you get like a silkworm. And then right click on one of your leaves, and it goes square, it, and if you mouse over it, it says infested leaves, and it gives you progress, and over time it'll spread and do the entire tree. And then you just break it. And you should get Yep, little bits of string, and more silkworms as well. So yeah, I just thought I would show that off. Um, this is kind of a... Well, I guess you need to go to the dungeon anyway, but if, and you won't always find a sapling. That's the problem with it. But if you do manage to get one, look, we got tons of string just from that one little batch of... That one little batch of leaves. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think we're actually going to have to call it there for today's episode um i hope you've enjoyed that that's two string farms in one we got a lot of building work done as well and i'm happy about that because it means we can f start to finally uh move into like the rf age and I'll, I'll keep working off on this off camera as well doing like little bits and pieces little bits of detail work we need to finish this building as well uh but yeah that's it thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next episode, bye bye